few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California, where there hasn't been a major quake since 1857. In Southern California, a dramatic transformation in the Earth's surface has captured the urgent attention of seismologists around the world. A deep fissure cutting across land just outside Coachella Valley has emerged with little warning, reigniting fears about the long dormant southern segment of the San Andreas Fault. This isn't an isolated geological curiosity. It's a physical symptom of long-held tectonic stress breaking through centuries of silence. For decades, researchers have been monitoring the San Andreas Fault, a sprawling 800-mile boundary that divides the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. Though it slices through both remote terrain and densely populated urban centers, its most troubling section has always been the southern stretch, an area that has not ruptured significantly since around 1680. Now, for the first time in living memory, this portion of the fault is displaying clear evidence of dynamic surface deformation, shifting the conversation from scientific speculation to urgent concern. The recent discovery of the fissure, verified by satellite data and ground reconnaissance, has been accompanied by a sharp uptick in seismic microactivity and an unsettling series of low-frequency tremors. These subtle vibrations, often imperceptible to the human ear or standard sensors, hint at deeper tectonic slips occurring beneath the surface. Such movements, when paired with surface fractures, suggest a fault line that is not merely awakening, but transitioning from a locked to an unstable state. The U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, which typically avoids alarmist declarations, has issued an exceedingly rare red alert. This top-tier warning level is reserved for scenarios involving immediate seismic threat, where the risk of a large-scale earthquake is not only possible, but increasingly likely. According to internal assessments, this segment of the San Andreas Fault has accumulated more than three centuries' worth of tectonic pressure. A rupture now could unleash that built-up energy in a matter of seconds. The crack is not superficial. Early reports estimate its length spans several kilometers, with satellite imaging capturing both vertical displacement and lateral shearing patterns. These deformations are consistent with the early stages of a major fault rupture. What is more alarming is the speed of its appearance, seemingly overnight, and the corresponding uptick in fault creep, displacement markers, and tremor activity across nearby seismic stations. Southern California's unique geology makes this situation even more perilous. The region is home to a complex network of intersecting faults, the San Jacinto, Elsinore, and Garlock systems, all of which lie in close proximity to the San Andreas and are capable of experiencing sympathetic ruptures. When one fault slips, it can redistribute stress throughout the region, triggering secondary quakes or accelerating failures in adjacent zones. It's a domino effect that transforms single rupture into a cascading seismic catastrophe. The concept of a multi-segment rupture is now central to ongoing research. Traditionally, the San Andreas was modeled as a segmented fault, with each zone potentially failing in isolation. But the evolving deformation pattern observed near Coachella Valley suggests that these boundaries may not be as clearly defined as once believed. If two or more segments rupture in rapid succession, the resulting earthquake could span hundreds of miles, ripping through populated corridors from San Bernardino to Bakersfield in a matter of minutes. This would not be a singular jolt. It would be a seismic sequence, an uninterrupted cascade of motion that produces high-intensity, long-duration shaking. This type of shaking is precisely what causes structural failures, even in buildings designed to withstand earthquakes. The risk of liquefaction, a phenomenon where saturated soils lose their strength and behave like fluid, further threatens areas like the Imperial Valley and Los Angeles Basin, where densely packed sediment lies beneath much of the built environment. More troubling still is the vulnerability of infrastructure built atop or near the fault. Highways, water lines, power grids, and communication networks all cross the San Andreas at multiple points. Even a modest rupture could sever lifelines that connect Southern California to the rest of the state and nation. In a worst-case scenario, entire cities could be isolated, 
emergency responders might be unable to reach those in need. Fuel supplies, medical logistics, and evacuation routes could all be crippled in a matter of moments. Communities such as Palm Springs, Riverside, and San Bernardino lie directly in the likely impact zone. Older buildings in these regions, especially those predating seismic retrofitting standards, are ill-equipped to handle the kind of violent lateral motion characteristic of the San Andreas. A nighttime quake, when most people are at home, unprepared, would maximize casualties and severely hinder emergency response. But the implications of the red alert extend beyond engineering or population exposure. They're forcing a shift in how science, policy, and public awareness intersect. For years, geologists warned that the San Andreas Fault was overdue for a significant rupture. That warning has now morphed from hypothetical to tangible. The sudden appearance of a deep surface fissure is not merely symbolic. It is a literal and figurative rupture in the landscape, an undeniable mark that the Earth is preparing to reset itself. Across scientific institutions, data from the fault zone is being analyzed at unprecedented speed. Geophones are capturing minute changes in seismic energy. Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar INSAR, satellites are measuring ground displacements down to the millimeter. Supercomputers are running real-time rupture simulations based on decades of historic fault behavior. These technologies have moved from academic tools to instruments of immediate crisis management. Meanwhile, ground teams scour the fault line for signs of foreshocks, secondary fractures, or surface displacement. Emergency agencies are activating response protocols. Real-time seismic alert systems are being retuned to detect early warning signals. Even a few seconds of advance notice could be the difference between a train derailment and a controlled stop, between life and death for thousands. But what cannot be fully quantified is the growing unease among the public. As cracks spread across once quiet stretches of Earth, so too does a collective anxiety. This is not just a scientific event. It's an existential one, a confrontation with the planet's raw and unrelenting power. The San Andreas Fault has whispered for centuries. Now it may be clearing its throat. While the sudden crack near Coachella Valley has captured headlines, it is only part of a larger and far more complex puzzle. Seismologists are now confronting the possibility that the San Andreas Fault System may be undergoing a rare and volatile transformation, one that challenges long-standing models of fault behavior and rupture prediction. Traditionally, the San Andreas has been considered a segmented fault, with southern, central, and northern stretches each capable of rupturing independently. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake devastated the northern portion, and the central segment has released energy periodically through moderate quakes. However, the southern stretch has remained ominously silent since the late 1600s. That dormancy has not meant safety, only accumulation. Over three centuries, the fault has stored immense elastic strain energy, locked beneath the crust like a coiled spring. Recent surface deformation suggests that energy is beginning to break free. What's particularly troubling is the growing evidence that multiple fault segments may now be interacting. Remote sensing satellites are capturing subtle ground deformations, not only near the original crack, but across a wider region stretching from Riverside to Palmdale. This may signal the start of a multi-segment rupture, a rare and devastating chain reaction where adjacent fault zones slip in rapid succession. Such a super rupture would dwarf the scale of any previous event along the San Andreas. Seismologists have long feared such a scenario. Ground simulations using supercomputers show that a full-length rupture from the Salton Sea to Parkfield could result in a magnitude 7.8 to 8.2 quake, lasting up to two minutes. Unlike shorter tremors that jolt the ground, long-duration quakes create rolling motion that resonates with the natural frequency of tall structures, amplifying their sway and making collapse more likely. The consequences wouldn't stop at ground shaking. Infrastructure laid across fault lines. Bridges, railways, aqueducts could shear apart. Power substations could topple. Natural gas lines might rupture, sparking fires in areas where water lines have already been severed. If such an event struck during California's dry wildfire season, it could lead to compound disasters, not just quake damage, but uncontrollable fires and landslides triggered by ground instability. In addition to the physical danger, there's the logistical paralysis a major quake would cause. 
Southern California is a vital artery in the United States infrastructure and economy. The region houses major ports, distribution hubs, data centers, and defense installations. A rupture of this scale would ripple far beyond the epicenter. Shipping routes might be suspended. Highways and railways could be unusable for weeks. Power and water disruptions could impact millions, halting production lines and supply chains. Communication systems might fail at a time when accurate information is most needed. The emotional and psychological toll would be incalculable. Entire communities would be uprooted. Hospitals could be overwhelmed. Families might be separated. In such conditions, panic often travels faster than information. That's why one of the USGS's top priorities has been refining early warning systems. Networks like ShakeAlert are being recalibrated in real time to detect the initial fast-moving P waves that precede the more destructive S waves. Even five to 10 seconds of warning can allow elevators to halt, gas valves to close, and people to seek immediate cover. On the ground, researchers are deploying geophones, seismometers, and GPS trackers at unprecedented density across Southern California. These instruments are now measuring crustal movements with submillimeter precision. Meanwhile, high-resolution drones are scanning the terrain for new fractures, ground uplift, and changes in topography. The emerging picture is one of growing instability. Strain maps indicate pressure redistributing rapidly, sometimes leaping across known fault boundaries. Another dimension of the crisis has emerged from underground, geochemical signals. Areas near the crack are emitting unusual hydrothermal gases, and some field teams have reported small pockets of warm, moist soil where the ground had previously been dry. This may indicate the release of high-pressure fluids from deep rock layers, fluids that can act as lubricants and reduce friction between fault blocks. Such processes are known to destabilize locked faults, transforming slow strain buildup into rapid slippage. Adding to the mystery is a faint but consistent pattern of deep, low-frequency earthquakes, or LFEs, being detected in the region. These barely perceptible tremors often originate 20 to 30 kilometers beneath the surface and are considered precursors to larger seismic events. Unlike standard quakes, LFEs don't cause immediate damage, but their presence suggests tectonic plates are slipping quietly at depth. Combined with the dramatic surface fissure, the data now points to a top-to-bottom activation of the fault system. Communities in the region are no longer just watching, they are reacting. Emergency drills have intensified in schools and workplaces, fuel and water reserves are being relocated, emergency operations centers across counties have entered high alert mode, portable satellite communication units are being pre-positioned in areas likely to lose power or signal, Local governments are assessing vulnerable buildings, particularly hospitals, bridges, and viaducts built before modern seismic codes were adopted. At the same time, the psychological landscape is shifting. Californians are no strangers to earthquakes, but the emergence of a visible crack stretching through once tranquil land has changed the tone of public conversation. It's no longer just scientists issuing warnings. Residents are sharing photos, footage, and firsthand accounts of the land subtly shifting, of animals behaving strangely, of an invisible force stirring beneath their feet. In many neighborhoods near the fault, people have described a low humming noise late at night, the kind that might be dismissed as imagination if not for the matching seismic data. Pets are acting erratically. Birds are changing their migration routes. These are not definitive signs of an imminent earthquake, but they add to the atmosphere of anticipation. The land seems to be whispering something urgent, and more people are starting to listen. As monitoring intensifies and tensions rise, the deeper scientific community remains locked in analysis, trying to determine whether the San Andreas Fault has reached a critical state or whether the current signals are part of a longer-term process. The distinction is vital, yet maddeningly elusive. Earthquakes by their nature are chaotic and complex, governed by non-linear systems, influenced by countless hidden variables, and largely resistant to precise prediction. This inherent uncertainty has left researchers walking a tightrope between caution and alarm. Some advocate for preparedness without panic, reminding the public that faults can exhibit heightened activity for months, even years, before rupturing or not at all. Others, however, argue that the confluence of warning signs is too striking to ignore. They point to case studies from Japan, Turkey, and Chile, where similar patterns preceded catastrophic events. The Southern San Andreas has been silent for over three centuries. 
Geologically speaking, it is well overdue. The debate is not just academic. It influences resource allocation, public messaging, and emergency response planning. Already, federal and state agencies are updating seismic hazard models. Insurance companies are recalculating risk in the face of potential widespread damage. Urban planners are revisiting zoning laws, particularly in the Inland Empire and areas east of Los Angeles, where urban sprawl has brought homes and infrastructure dangerously close to the fault zone. Beneath this scientific and bureaucratic machinery lies a more human story, a people living on the edge of something ancient and unpredictable. For communities near the fault line, the question is not if, but when. And perhaps more importantly, how prepared are we? While fault maps and rupture models are helpful, Resilience often comes down to human factors, knowledge, training, cohesion, and access to resources. Efforts are underway to close those gaps. Community resilience programs are being rolled out to teach people how to secure their homes, store emergency supplies, and reconnect with loved ones during a crisis. Schools are integrating seismic safety into the curricula. Faith-based and grassroots organizations are stepping in to help vulnerable populations, including the elderly, disabled, and unhoused. But despite these efforts, the truth remains. No system, no matter how advanced, can fully eliminate risk in the face of a rupture of this magnitude. Buildings can be retrofitted, bridges can be reinforced, alerts can be improved, but the land will move and the consequences will be felt. There is also an existential dimension to the unfolding situation. The San Andreas Fault is not just a crack in the earth. It is a reminder of the planet's living nature, of its deep time and restless energy. It speaks to the transience of human structures and the limits of our control. All the highways, cities, and systems we've built sit atop a shifting crust, driven by forces that began forming billions of years ago and will continue long after we're gone. And yet, this awareness doesn't have to lead to fear. It can be a call to action. Understanding the fault, scientifically, socially, and culturally, allows us to live with it more intelligently. Preparedness isn't just about stockpiling water or strapping bookshelves to walls. It's about cultivating a mindset of awareness and adaptability. In the end, it is not just about surviving the quake, but emerging from it stronger, more unified, and more conscious of our shared vulnerability. As researchers continue to analyze the seismic activity near the Coachella Valley and beyond, one thing is clear. We are witnessing a moment that may define California's geological history. Whether this moment culminates in a historic rupture or slowly quiets into background strain, the lessons it offers are too valuable to ignore. The earth is speaking through tremors, through fractures, through whispers in the soil. If you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a like, share it with others who care about seismic safety, and subscribe for more in-depth updates and science-based reporting on the evolving story beneath our feet.